Hello and welcome to the episode 276 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The closing of the Indra Club, the participation to the public ear, and a very quick chocolate recording session are among the stories we'll cover today. Let's start the episode with the 3rd of October 1959 performance that a quarryman, featuring Ken Brown on guitar and George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and vocals, gave at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool as part of their Saturday night residency at the Basement Club. Another residency, in 1960, took a novel twist on this day. The Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, in addition to George, John and Paul, performed their 48th and last night at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany. Their contract hadn't expired, in fact, it wouldn't until the 16th of October, but the Indra was closed down by the police after the woman who lived above the club inundated the city council with complaints for the noise. By this time, having performed for over 200 hours, the Beatles had become quite an act, and Bruno Koschmeider, owner of the Indra, simply decided to turn the venue back to a strip club and move the lads to another of his venues, the Kaiser Keller, from the following evening onwards. Moving on to 1962, the Beatles, now a quartet with Ringo Starr on drums and Paul McCartney on bass, performed an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, sharing the stage with the Echoes, previously the backing band of Jim Vincent and Conway Twitty. The Echoes were technically topping the bill, but it was the Beatles who made an impression with their antics. In 1963, in the morning, and more precisely at 10 am, John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr were at the EMI Studio 3 to overdub new vocal sections on I Wanna Be Your Man and Little Child. The work was concluded at 1 pm. In the afternoon, the three were joined by George Harrison, finally back from his US trip. They were interviewed by Michael Colley at the NEMS Enterprises office in London for the BBC radio programme The Public Ear. The Beatles were fans of the programme, a spoken word magazine centred on interviewing a variety of people, and they listened to it regularly while on tour. This particular show focused on the Mercy Beat boom, and featured, along with the interview with the Fabs, interviews with Billy Harry, Pete Best, Millie Sutcliffe, mother of Stuart, beat poet Royston Ellis, and several members of the public. The show was aired on the 3rd of November, between 3 and 4 pm. In the evening, between 10.10 and 10.40 pm, the BBC documentary The Mercy Sound, shot with the participation of the Beatles and other local beat bands and fans, was aired for the first time. More material for broadcasting in 1964. The Beatles returned at the independent Granville Studio in London to film a mimed performance of Kansas City, Hey, 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 I'm a Loser and Boys for the ABC's show Shindig. In addition, the band joined the Car Denver Trio for the finale of the show. The whole program, recorded with live audience, was broadcast in the United States by ABC on the 7th of October, between 8.30 and 9 pm Eastern Standard Time. On the 3rd of October 1966, while still recuperating from his accidental overdose on prescription drugs, Beatles manager Brian Epstein was forced to appear in front of the press to deny that the Beatles were splitting up and specifically that Paul McCartney was leaving the band. With George in England, Paul and Ringo keeping a low profile in Britain, John having disappeared from the public radar, no concert planned and their recording contract with EMI about to expire, the press was running rampant with claims that the pubs were done and the Beatles were no more. Epstein decided to reveal that John was acting as Private Gripwood in Richard Lester's new film, How I Won the War, currently being filmed in Spain, 
and that Paul was composing the soundtrack for a film called Wedlocked, eventually retitled The Family Way. Now, I wouldn't go as far as saying that our little community is a bit like a family, but it is certainly something special. Of course, you can decide you don't want to have any part to it, but wouldn't it be nicer if one day you could say, I was there from the start and I helped out? Please visit www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do. There's really a lot of things that only require a bit of your time. Thank you! In 1967, the editing of Magical Mystery Tour went on at Norman's Film Productions. On the 3rd of October 1968, instead, the Beatles were again busy in a studio, with a third session straight at the Trident Studios. Working from 4 pm to 2.30 am, the pubs rehearsed and recorded Savoy Truffle, a new song written by George Harrison, inspired by his friend Eric Clapton's love for chocolate sweets. The rhythm track was completed in just one take, with George on guitar, Paul on bass and Ringo on drums, and John deciding to sit out for the whole song. One more recording session in 1969 concludes the episode, but this one was not for a Beatles release. On this date, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, Eric Clapton, Klaus Vorman and Ringo Starr reconvened at the Lansdowne Studios in London to record the B-side of the next single of the Plastic Ono Band. Don't worry, Kyoko, Mummy is only looking for her hand in the snow. The song had debuted with the band at the Toronto Rock and Roll Revival Festival, as we saw in episode 256 of this podcast. Tomorrow we'll detail two debut appearances of the Beatles, and more of course. This episode, though, is over. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.